Matt Cotrero may have been given a pass last season, but it's go time now, and the wins have to start piling up in 2024. You are Locked On Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. Find us on all those podcasting platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. We're also on YouTube. Be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. No better time in the playoffs coming up for the NFL to hop on FanDuel and start placing your bets today. If you're a first-time listener of Week Course, always love new listeners here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And a little bit more about me. You know, I work here in Kansas City. I work in the sports world at Sports Ready Weight 10 WHB. I've actually got a show over there once a week. And then also I work with ESPN Kansas City. I have a show Monday through Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. So if you ever want to get my thoughts on things that may not always pertain to Royals baseball, you can catch me over there. Very easy to find, just as this podcast is so easy to find. Again, Twitter handle is at JohnnyJ underscore 15, at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. We also have TikTok and Instagram, at Locked underscore on underscore Royals. So lots of different ways you can find us, and we hope that it's been pretty easy to find us. And for new people out there, new listeners, we hope we are bringing you the best possible content as we move forward throughout this very long offseason. It's been an exciting one, but you know with baseball in the offseason, it just... It drags on when the winter months start rolling around. We got tons of snow in Kansas City. It's been very cold, and I think it just makes you long for some summer days of Royals baseball. Well, the first segment, let's dive right into it. Don't want to waste any time. We haven't had a podcast the last couple of days, so I wanted to make sure that we brought some very hard-hitting content today. And tomorrow, we're going to open things back up with a Mailbag Friday, so we'll be getting some questions from the listeners We always love to incorporate you guys into these podcast episodes. But for today, I wanted to jump back into a topic I might have had a couple of months ago, before I think this offseason really went underway. And I think I I touched on this topic first in the middle of August, I want to say it was. It was not long since taking over uh, this podcast page. And it involved Matt Quattrero and the expectation that he had going into year one Uh, what I expected from the coaching staff as a whole, the numbers I thought would improve, and, you know, what you can take away from an evaluation season. Now, if you've never heard me say this before, well, good thing you get to hear it for the first time because it might make you think differently about Mac Quattrero. I believe when the Royals went through this coaching search, they informed every single candidate what they were going to be stacked up against. They were not going to be that candidate that took over a baseball team and it was going to be playoffs or bust. They also weren't going to spend a ton of money where that manager would have a ton of talent to work with. They highlighted the key players, Bobby Wood Jr. being one of them, uh, Brady Singer being one of them. Uh, you look across the diamond with Vinny Pasquantino, uh, Michael Massey, Kyle Isbell, Melendez, highlighted some players. But for the most part, Mac Quattrero took this job knowing year one was going to be very tough. He was going to take the brunt of a lot of criticism, and I've been down in the clubhouse multiple times, and after multiple losses, more than multiple, I mean, tens of losses this past year when I would go down in the clubhouse and hear Mac Quattrero speak, and he's a very even-keeled guy. Uh, he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low, and I think that can be good for a manager, but to some people, to some Royals fans, they weren't happy with the demeanor because it was so, so laid back, and it almost seemed like at times he didn't care. But he kind of squashed that at the end of the year, and I really liked what he said. And it was along the lines of, well, what do you want me to come in here? Do you want me to to come in here in tears and cry and tell you how bad it is? No, he knew that with that group, they were going to go through quite the rough patch. And he was going to have to shoulder the blame of 100-plus losses. I mean, when your big free agent signing was your worst player on the team, it's going to get really ugly. But there were some positives. Bobby Wood Jr. became a star. Cole Reagans became a star. 
You you found a good bullpen beast in James MacArthur. Again, I'm not going to go through five or six good things because you lose 106. I'm not going to highlight a lot of great things. But here's the difference now for year two, and it's important. Now he's got a team to manage. I think last year there were players to manage. There was not a team to manage. So bullpen mishaps, uh, choosing the lineups, trying to be very creative with that. It's hard to do it when you don't have much talent to begin with. I mean, they lost one of their best offensive contributors. You know, what was it, 60 games into the year, Vinny Pasquantino. And it was during a, a brutal stretch for the team. I mean, there was a lot of lows that happened. We know that. 106 losses. Salvador Perez got hurt. But now, things are different. The front office spent money on the bullpen. Spent money on the rotation. Out of the corner outfield bat. You get Vinny Pasquantino back. You have Salvador Perez back healthy. And by the way, looks in fantastic shape. Maybe the best shape he's been in in eight to nine years. Looks really, really good as he's been posting on his Instagram page, working out. And I think even Reggie Sanders was uh, recording him in one of his workouts. But looks slimmed down, looks good. And I think he'll be ready to go when pitchers and catchers report here in about a month. Uh, Michael Garcia burst onto the scene. You've got a very stable third baseman. Uh, and now you're looking for upside in the outfield with MJ Melendez and Kyle Isbell. But the key is here, the expectation has been set. There is no gimme season now. There is no evaluation. The Royals are going into this season trying to win and trying to compete. And when some of the newbies, like last year, Skip Schumacher in Miami, right, he goes to the postseason, I kind of thought it was a similar offseason that Miami had last year, and I can compare it to this Royals offseason. Did just enough to keep them competitive. Only the good thing for the Royals is they're not playing in the NL East where there's the Phillies and there's the Mets and there's the Braves arguably the best division in all of baseball. Marlins still found a way to get in and expanded playoffs. For the Royals, you're competing in the worst division. So for Matt Quattrero, it is go time. You have to start churning out wins. You have to start separating yourself as a good manager and showing Royals fans in the baseball world this was the right hire. I still stand by it. It was the right hire. The coaching staff that was assembled was very analytically driven, a uh, very much new school because the last staff was very much old school, even though Mike Matheny took an analytics course. Like that's trying to learn it where Mac Quattrero, Paul Hoover, they came from very analytical organizations. You know, Tampa Bay and Cleveland. You know, Zach Both from Minnesota, Brian Sweeney, Cleveland. You know, Alex Zumo and Keone Duran, very analytically driven. That there are guys now working with these players trying to preach the newness of the game. Whereas a couple years ago, they were stuck in the past of, hey, we won it the old school way. We're going to try to do that again. It doesn't work in modern baseball. So now this is when I think we can really start to evaluate who Matt Quattrero is as a manager. That's what I'm most excited about. Now that he's got stable pieces out there, how do you manage it? When you've got a bullpen with more stability, how are you going to operate it? And that's what's going to be the, the cold, hard truth for Mac Quattrero and for Royals fans. You know, if we get to July and this team is 20 games out of first, uh, maybe Mac Quattrero's in over his head and you have to make that shift in the offseason. Because I'll tell you this, he can't lose 100 again. Not with this roster. You, you can't lose 100. I don't even think you can lose 90 plus games and really have the full support of the fan base. The things have to change and change quickly. Ever since Ned Yost left, there hasn't been a lot of wins. And even in the final years of Ned Yost, there certainly wasn't many wins. But now it is go time for Matt Quattrero. You have to start churning out those wins because now for the first time in nearly a decade, there is a level of expectation going into opening day. Fans are not going to sit around and be positive if you're 5-10, 15 games in. Not that they'll be calling for Mac Quattrero's head, but he's got to repair a lot of burn bridges for fans that did not want to sit through that 106 loss season. I mean, nobody really did. Some fans were more optimistic than others, but he's got to start repairing that relationship with the fan base. And really, it's not his fault. He was given quite a bad team. Now he's been given a much better team you have to start showing now why you are the best manager 
for the Kansas City Royals, not just now, but moving forward. So will the wind start pumping out? Are we going to start seeing more competitive baseball in Kansas City and better decision-making from Mac Quattrero? Well, let us know in the YouTube comments below or let me know on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. We'll take our first break of the show. When we come back, I'm going to give you some sleepers that may make the 26-man roster coming out of camp in Surprise, Arizona. That's next on Locked On Royals. You are tuned into Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 1-5. You also can find us on all those podcasting platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Google Podcast, Odyssey, and we're also on YouTube. Our goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers by opening day. We're about 140 away, so keep subscribing and send it to people who haven't subscribed yet to this podcast that I have a lot of fun doing and giving to you Royals fans out there, wherever you may be listening. Before we go any further, let's give a shout-out to one of the title sponsors today in Jace Medical. I know we come to sports to escape from some of the crazy realities of real life, but can we talk for just a minute about prepping for real life? According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade. That is frightening and should be frightening to everybody listening out there. I actually just had a really bad flu about a couple weeks ago, had to postpone a couple of episodes. You got to make sure you're taken care of. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than if you've got you know, kids, mother, father, grandparents that are struggling with the flu. Or, you know, you just have any of your loved ones that aren't able to be taken care of. Well, you don't need to stress anymore because Jace Medical is going to have you covered. Thankfully, Jace Medical is going to have you covered. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter and it will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medication will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code Locked On to get $20 off on your order. Again, go to jacemedical.com and use offer code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to get $20 off on your order. Well, I think over the past couple of weeks, we've dwindled down what this 26-man roster is going to look like. And everybody in their mind has uh, maybe you know, uh, some free time and when you're not doing anything. You may write them down on a piece of paper. I know I've got a, a 26-man roster projection in my notes uh, on my phone. Very easy to do. I'm not much of a, a writer because I've got terrible handwriting. So I'm just going to use electronics. I'm going to use my phone. And make sure I can read everything because I can tell you right now, nobody uh, can read my chicken scratch that I have when trying to piece together a line. Never was good at it. But for some of you out there that do have good pensmanship, you might have written down an opening day roster, what the bullpen looks like, what the rotation looks like. But here's the the tough part about it all is that we're going to go into spring training. And by the way, this podcast will be down in surprise for about four to five days uh, coming up in the middle of February. So we're very excited about that. Going to have some interviews, going to have some live video before the games actually happen. So kind of when pitchers and catchers report, we'll get some very good hard-hitting content down in Surprise, Arizona. The thing is, though, with spring training, we know all about it. Guys get hurt, guys get banged up, guys underperform, and guys excel. And for the Royals, as much as they've added, I still think there is competition at a couple of spots. Not just in the lineup. I think in the bullpen, I think in the rotation, it's going to be interesting how things shake out because now we've been quiet for about the last month or so. I mean, the Royals did all their shopping, got it all done. It was like their Christmas shopping, got it all done before anybody else was finished or even started to go out. And then they just kind of had the luxury of sitting back, didn't need to worry too much about it. And so now that it's been a month, it started to get me wondering if they feel like they're set, if they're going to add another guy or two. There'll probably be a couple of minor league deal guys in spring training invites. They released, I think, 23 non-roster invites 
a couple of days back. And we'll probably go over that at some point in tomorrow's episode. But I would say that you never can account for injuries. And you also have to factor in guys struggling in spring training. Like I've been thinking about this over and over again about what happens if Michael Massey struggles mightily in surprise and Nick Lofton is tearing the cover off the ball. Do you give Michael Massey the benefit of the doubt and say, all right, we're moving forward with you? Or do you say, okay, Nick Lofton earned that spot. He beat out Michael Massey in camp. And I do think there's going to be some competition at second base. I've wondered, you know, for the outfield, it seems pretty set. I think even if MJ or Isbell or Renfro struggled in surprise, uh, they're not moving them off that spot. But what you can contemplate, what about the fourth outfielder spot? You know, I think it might come down to Dyron Blanco or Drew Waters. One of those guys could be traded. And to be honest, I think Dyron Blanco gives you more value at the plate. A little bit in the field. They seem like a toss-up defensively. But on the base path, Dyron Blanco is the fastest guy, if not the second fastest guy behind Bobby Wood Jr. on the team. I think that's going to be the battle coming out of camp is who's the fourth outfielder. You don't want to carry six of them. Garrett Hampson can play the outfield. Nelson Velasquez can play the outfield. Somebody's going to be the odd man out. So I've got second base as some competition there in surprise and the fourth outfielder spot. No, I'm just not sold that Drew Waters can make this team. But Dyron Blanco's also had to take his scorching hot winter league numbers and translate that to surprise if he is going to make this team. Because the downside to him is a little bit of age. He's going to be 31. Uh, he's still very new into Major League Baseball. You're not going to wait around for a guy to be productive you know, at age 33 or 34 a couple of years down the road. He's very much a stopgap guy. But I think he is right now a better fourth outfielder than Drew Waters may be. So if you want to call him a sleeper pick to make the roster, I guess I could do that. And then I look at the last bullpen spot. Right now, I think seven of those spots are locked down. Uh, you're going to have Will Smith. You're going to have Chris Stratton. You have Nick Anderson. Uh, then you're going to have John McMillan, James MacArthur, Carlos Hernandez. And I know I'm missing one guy at the top of my head right now. Uh, so I do apologize for that. If, if whoever... Uh, you can go out there and find, let me know in the YouTube comments or let me know on Twitter. I'm just blanking off the top of my head as I'm trying to rattle things off here because I know there's been a lot of interchanging in the bullpen. But one of those last spots will either come down to Jake Brents, Josh Taylor, maybe it's one of the minor league deal guys, a Tyler Duffy, Dan Altavia, Sam Long. There's going to be competition there, and that's what I'm very excited for for the bullpen. Because that last spot is going to go to the guy that shines in surprise. That really earns that spot. We saw it a couple years back with Trevor Rosenthal and Josh Stallman, for that matter. Two of those guys were lighting up the radar gun in surprise. And they earned spots on the COVID team roster. That was cool to see. And I think one of these final bullpen spots is going to go to a Jake Brents or a Josh Taylor. Uh, Dan Altavia really is a sleeper. I think if his stuff is still as good as it was two years ago, that's going to be a sneaky addition to the bullpen. I also think Tyler Duffy is such a stable hand. I remember him for years in Minnesota, though the Royals usually hit well off him. He was just a steady hand, man. You could turn things over in the fifth or the sixth or the seventh. He can get you an inning. He can get you a scoreless inning. And I think he's going to have a really good chance to make this roster uh, coming out of spring training. So some of those minor league deal guys, outside chance for sure. And then I'm also going to throw in, you know, back to that fourth outfield spot. What if Tyler Gentry comes in tearing the cover off the ball? He was added to the 40-man roster. If he beats out Blanco and Waters, why can he not be the fourth outfielder? I, I've talked myself off the ledge for that because I did say at one point in time, is Tyler Gentry going to get anything from sitting the bench every single day? Well, it comes down to what you value Tyler Gentry as. Do you see him as a future right fielder, an everyday right fielder in Kansas City? Well, then, yeah, maybe I'm putting him down in AAA to start the year until he can take over the spot full time. I just don't know if I'm there. I don't know if I can see Tyler Gentry being an everyday player. He could be as valuable as Dyron Blanco or maybe a little bit better, or he could be the worst of the bunch. But he's somebody, I mean, if you're out of the 40-man roster, there is some uh, hope that you can turn things around and, and make a name for yourself in Surprise, Arizona. So those are a couple of names I think are going to have a really good chance 
uh, to make this roster. I think those are what, you know, feel like the popular picks. I might throw some odd Taylor in there, a really great triple A hitter, but struggled at the major league level, but there's value there. He can play a lot of positions. He's fast. And I do think there's a little bit of pop in that bat. Just needs to have maybe more games under his belt and get more comfortable with facing big league pitching, which he'll get from time to time in surprise. So those are my surprise picks, my sleepers, I guess I should say, to make the roster coming out of spring training. All right, before we move on to our final segment, I want to give a shout out to Locked On Sports Today. It is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. And tomorrow, a reminder that's going to be a mailbag Friday, I believe, either our first or second of the offseason since we've had only, you know, three episodes a week. Actually, it has been since we had three episodes. This will be our first mailbag Friday since we've moved to just three episodes a week because I know in the offseason we had Monday through Friday. Every Friday was mailbag Friday. But tomorrow, it's going to be making its return. I'll tweet out uh, the the question for everybody to respond to tomorrow. So give me a follow on Twitter at Johnny J underscore 15. And we're hoping to get 20, 20 plus questions that we can run through for the entirety of the show. So that's coming to you tomorrow on the Locked On Royals channel. When we return, who is the most dangerous team, the dangerous threat to the Kansas City Royals in the American League Central? I'll tell you next on Locked On Royals. You are tuned into Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter at JohnnyJ15 and follow us on wherever you get your podcasts from. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and we're on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. Before we go any further, let's give a shout out to the other title sponsor today in FanDuel. And with the NFL regular season officially wrapped up, there is still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, finding bets in the new Explore tab, making a parlay in the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. And I will say this, if you're hesitant and you, you don't want to lose too much money, I was there in the beginning. You know, when, when it was legal to bet here where I was living and I was betting on NCAA tournament games and college football games, the adrenaline high of betting on FanDuel was very fun, but I didn't always have the best return and, and profit. You know, I, I lost a couple of bets and I won a couple, but once you get that consistency, once you can hit that niche and, and you really know what sport you're good at, stick with it. But more importantly, use FanDuel because it's the best app to use when placing your sports bets. Now that we are getting closer and closer to the start of the regular season, and to be honest with you, the end of this offseason, right? Now it's about a month away from when pitchers and catchers report, and there's still a couple of big names out there that have not signed. And I think by the time spring training rolls around, the Cody Bellingers of the world, you know, the the Blake Snells of the world, they're going to find new homes. I mean, we found out, or at least I found out a couple hours ago, Marcus Stroman, he found a new home with the New York Yankees for $37 million over two years. So the Royals could have afforded it. I'll be honest about that. But he might have had a, a little bit higher of an asking price to come to Kansas City over New York, where he is from, I believe. I think Stroman is from the East Coast area, so that might have felt like a no-brainer in the long run. I thought he was going to go back to Toronto, but in the end, it was the New York Yankees. But I will say this. The more big-name free agents that fall off the board and don't wind up in the American League Central is a big bonus for the Kansas City Royals. As we've said multiple times before, this division is weak. It is incredibly weak. Now, the Minnesota Twins, they won a playoff series, and you got to tip your cap, right? Minnesota was a cursed, starved franchise, and 
they took down Toronto with ease and basically took Houston to the brink. Uh, They at least gave the Astros some fight before being eliminated. So Minnesota, no brainer here. They're the most dangerous team in the Central and the most dangerous to the Royals because the numbers were terrible against Minnesota last year. And Minnesota still has a lot of great players. Correa, Buxton. You look at the rotation with Joe Ryan, Pablo Lopez. You know, you you did lose Sonny Gray. Did lose a couple of pieces. But overall, it's a young team. It's a team that can thrive. You know, they're still trying to shop Kepler and Jorge Polanco, so they might subtract a little bit more. Here's the thing, though, with Minnesota. Their biggest free agent signing so far is Josh Stamont, the former Royal. Other than that, they've only lost guys. They've only lost some of their stars. They've lost a couple of pieces to their rotation, and they haven't really replenished it. I don't know if they're thinking uh, they can just stick with the guys they have in-house. I mean, Louis Varland, who was great for the Wichita wind surge, kind of close to to where I am, he was a stud when he got called up to Minnesota. But Minnesota historically does this. You know, they, they're just not a, a big-time spending franchise. Even when they've had their good years, they're not that aggressive. And even when they were really good, I think about the Bomba squad with, you know, Nelson Cruz leading the charge and Miguel Sano, oh, the big hitters you know, that set the major league record for home runs in a season. Team home runs, I should say. They never had any pitching. This past year, they get the pitching, don't have a very good offense. Carlos Correa declines. Buxton can't stay healthy once again. Now, Jorge Polanco was hurt a lot of the season. Now, they had a great year, and they are the favorite to win the American League Central again, but it's good news that we are a month away from pitchers and catchers reporting, and not only have they been quiet, they're really not linked to any of the stars left. They could always blow us out of the water and you know go out there for a, a Snell or a Bellinger. I, I don't see it. I don't see it with either of those two guys. I don't see them bringing in Matt Chapman. I could be wrong, but Minnesota has not been aggressive at all. The only aggressive team in the Central, aside from the Royals, has been Detroit. Detroit has really uh, bolstered their rotation, bringing in Jack Flaherty and Kenta Maeda. I still think the Royals got two of the better options in Waka and Lugo because Flaherty has to bounce back, and Maeda uh, hasn't really been a frontline guy for a while, but he's a pretty good number four or five, which Detroit, they already had a pretty stable rotation and a bullpen. Offensively, though, They still need a lot of help. Mark Canna is really the only true piece they added to that roster. And unless I'm forgetting somebody, it doesn't feel like that's the biggest move they could have made. Cleveland has not done anything. Chicago has just assembled the 2019 Royals, so I can't say I take that too seriously. And they could overhaul their farm system by unloading Dylan Seas and Luis Robert, but Chris Getz, former Kansas City Royal, and a lot of the influence they have in the front office, they're not willing to move on from those guys. They're not willing to trade, which makes no sense, because they're projected to lose upwards of 90 games, 95-plus games, 100 games, and they're going to hang on to guys for too long, and they could decline. Who knows? But the American League Central, outside of Kansas City, has not had a very good offseason. And the more and more these names fall off the board and they're going to the Dodgers and the Yankees. I know everybody's upset about the Dodgers picking up everybody. That's really not bad for Kansas City because the Dodgers are the Dodgers. They're on the National League side. They're going to have to go through the NL West. That's more of a problem for the Diamondbacks, Padres, the Giants, the Rockies. That's their problem. The American League, yeah, I think it matters who goes to the Yankees because if you are to make some miracle playoff run, You would have to likely go through the Yankees at some point. But like Baltimore hasn't done anything or not anything of significance. They got Craig Kimbrell. They ran on Dylan Seas, but now it looks like the White Sox are going to keep Seas. I know it's kind of going off the rails here and and talking about teams that aren't pertaining to the American League Central. But step one is winning the Central. Every day that passes that a big name free agent is not picking one of their opponents in the Central is a very big win for Kansas City. The only way. They compete in this division as if it stays the same, if it doesn't improve. And so far this offseason, it hasn't really improved. The only team that has, I'll go, I'll, I'll say two. 
you know, I'll, I'll say two for this, Kansas City and Detroit. The other three teams, they do not seem too interested in spending much money. Well, that's going to do it for another edition of Lockdown Royals and the Lockdown Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 1-5. Find us on all the podcasting platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, and we are on YouTube. We're on Odyssey. Can't miss us. We are very easy to find. Before we go, want to give a shout out one more time to Locked On Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. For tomorrow's episode, we're going to have, once again, a Mailbag Friday. So keep it posted. Keep it locked in on my Twitter account at JohnnyJ15 and start sending your questions my way. But until next time, you take it easy, Kansas City.